What's up guys? Welcome back to the Home Slice. I'm going to do another rope of death test today, but just to do a really brief and concise summary of the data so far. Basically, this ship rope that I've been using to test edges, it just destroys and annihilates pretty much everything. <laughs> Um, it's got probably a bit of sand, salt, it's, it's a used uh, high tensile rope that was, you know, used on a ship for years and years and years, so it's quite a monster. So far, it kills almost all edges. Maximet, with a hair whittling edge, made it about halfway through, which tells me that there is some value to a very high carbide volume, but perhaps that's not enough to get you all the way through the rope. Um, 3V, with a dual grit edge, got about 80% of the way through the rope, which tells me, you know what? maybe having a high level of toughness because the carbide volume on 3V is much smaller. So maybe a high level of toughness is actually more important for this particular rope because of how dirty it is. When it hits particles, it needs to be able to be tough enough to not chip out, but to sustain impact with sort of hard particles and stuff. So apparently carbide volume matters somewhat, apparently toughness matters somewhat. I tried S30V and it just totally died. The S30V with a hair whittling edge barely made it half an inch into the rope. And thinking about that later, I was I was surprised by how little that is because the carbide volume's relatively high on S30V. But then I sharpened it with a coarse edge, an edge with a little bit of texture to it, a little bit of grab to it. Actually, the S30V got almost farther than any of the others I've mentioned so far, it probably got 80 or 85% of the way through the rope. There was like one big strand left that it just stopped cutting on that one and I couldn't quite get through it. So the marked difference between fine or hair whittling S30V and coarse S30V was much bigger than I had imagined on this particular rope. I think you need a, a edge with a lot of aggressiveness and texture because you need to not be able to push down really hard. I think the fine edges suffer even though they're good edges and probably in real world use would perform pretty much the same or better than a coarse edge. But this test is so demanding like that I think if you have to push really hard and if, if the fine edges need a little bit of extra pressure to initiate a cut, that pressure when they hit grit and dirt inside the rope, it just kind of kills the edge. So I'm coming to this conclusion. I think you need, um, in order of importance, uh, an edge with a lot of texture is maybe a first importance, and then quite a lot of toughness is maybe a close second, and then a relatively close third is you also need some carbide volume. And I say that because the H1 made it in about an inch and did pretty well actually, but the Victorinox knives generally make it in about half an inch and then just, just die no matter what kind of edge I've put on them so far. So overall, I don't know that we're going to get like the most incredibly useful data from this rope. But what's cool about it is if indeed those three things are the highest priorities, which would seem to be the case because the only edge that's made it through the entire rope so far has been CPM M4 with a dual grit edge, which has a decently high carbide volume, a decently high toughness, and it had a, a very aggressive edge on it. So where am I going to go from here? I think I'm going to buy a really thick manila rope because I would like to be able to test. I would like for like the Victorinoxes and stuff like that to be able to at least get through most of or all the way through a rope so that I can do some real edge comparisons on simpler steels as well as the more intense steels. But I think that I'm going to keep this death rope as the final bit of the gauntlet for <laughs> the edges to go through. And as I test with maybe a, a different sort of rope and narrow down which edges seem to be performing the best, then a final test for them can be to face off against the death rope. But before we close off those tests, I figured I'd take the three steels that have the highest sort of 
carbide volume or toughness to carbide bo volume balance that I have right now. And we do a couple final tests to see if we can sort of confirm or deny what I'm suspecting. So I've put a coarse edge on Maximet and I'll probably also do so with M4 and MagnaCut and see how they go through the rope. And then I'll probably put a dual grit edge on both MagnaCut and M4, a fresh dual grit edge, and see how they fare against the rope with that. And then I'll probably close off this chapter. So anyway, enough talk, let's get started and let's see how this Maximet does against the death rope. I should mention that this Maximet is sharpened 250 grit both sides on an easy lap diamond plate and stropped gently and lightly on a pair of blue jeans. It's feeling very aggressive, so we'll see how we go. <laughs> Guys, we have finally conquered the death rope with another edge. 250 grit Maximet. That's, it took 250 grit coarse sharpening to get through this monster of a rope. Oh my goodness. And you can see why. Look at this. If you see the cutting board here that I was um, cutting over, there's literally rocks on it that came out of this rope during the cutting. So that is ridiculous, but Maximet did it. <laughs> That's cool. I was hoping we could finally do some justice to Maximet. It's obviously, it's not very sharp anymore, but it doesn't feel flat, flat. Um, I would guess it's well up over 400 best though. At the end, um, this portion in the middle that you use a lot for slicing, um, it was really beginning to squeak. So it was, it was really not carrying any aggression anymore. So the last few fibers of the rope I had to get through utilizing the tip and the heel of the blade here. I guess it's it's worth noting that this this edge test isn't particularly perfectly fair. If I'm going to use the full edge, then a knife that has a longer edge would have an advantage. So I'll take that into account in the future. Fortunately, the edge length on this spider comb eel is very similar to many of the other knives that have almost got through it. So it's very similar to the Benchmade 943 edge length. And so I don't think that's a significant factor here. Okay, I guess all that's left is to do a best test and see how that Maximet is doing.
Okay, 766 in the center of the blade. That sort of makes sense, being that it's high carbide volume. Once once it takes the damage, um, I think it's likely to take some sort of chipping damage as opposed to abrasion damage more so. So I think that that's a bit higher than what we saw definitely on the M4. Um, the M4 was still in the 500s and saw some use after getting through this rope. So a little bit different there, but I'll be excited to see what the next steel holds. Anyway, for now, I'll just say peace out from the Home Slice guys. You have a great day.